Black Talk Radio Network is made possible in part with help from the Black Talk Media Project, a North Carolina-based nonprofit engaged in the production and distribution of independent digital black media. Find out more by going to blacktalkradionetwork.com or blacktalkmediaproject.org and look for the menu tab, Crowdfunding Black Media. Black Talk Media Project, helping to provide you with new black media for the new millennium. Opinions expressed by callers, guests, and hosts do not necessarily reflect those of the Black Talk Radio Network and Black Talk Media Project. Black Talk Radio is new black media for the new millennium. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. We appreciate you for joining us tonight on BIB Radio. Today is April 27th, 2017. And we are here today to bring you everything that you need in entrepreneurial radio. And I believe I am joined by my co-host, Brother Robert 11X. Are you there, Robert? Yes, I am, CC. How are you? I am excellent, splendid, wonderful, and magnificent. Well, great, because I, too, feel both excellent and splendid, also wonderful, and just (laughs) knowing that I'm alive in this day and time that we live in, it, it just confirms that I know that I'm blessed. Oh, amen. I heard that. Um... Okay, so um, today I am so happy to have whoever wants to join us, join us, because we are going to have a wonderful, wonderful conversation tonight, Um, one that needs to be had. Um, If you all would like to join us, you can definitely call in at 1-866-510-9025 or 704-802-5056. Press star star if you'd like us to uh, recognize you, and we will definitely see your hand raised and get you on air. Um, so, so tonight, let me read the header. And it says, join us for another episode of B Radio, where we will discuss your gripes, complaints, compliments, or praises concerning black businesses. Why have you decided not to put them over there? Black-owned businesses close their doors. Is it of no fault of their own? Could their customer service use a little polishing? We will also discuss Shea Moisture and their decision to sell and diversify their hair care products. Have you registered yet for the Dudley Gala 2017? Mr. Joe Dudley has never sold out and is in fact has continuously over the years supported black people in the hair care industry and becoming entrepreneurs. So listen and find out uh, who has been recently invited to speak uh, because there's definitely uh, a whole roster of speakers that they just added. And I hope you all can um, go to that entrepreneurial um, extravaganza or gala, as they're calling it. So, uh, again, I want to thank those of you who have joined us. I see Arminda's there. Hi, Arminda. If you'd like to speak, definitely press star, star, star. so that you can get in. Okay, so, Robert, um, how did we come across this topic this time? Because we're not really having any guests tonight. Of course, 
people that like to, would like to chime in, of course, we welcome that because we all need to come together and solve this problem. Like, why are we having such an issue um, dealing with black businesses? Um, how did we come come to this um, subject matter today? Well, I was, you know, on Facebook and I ran across a post on my timeline by the young lady's name is Kamisha McDowell. And the post read, uh, why do uh, black businesses, uh, name why, uh, reasons why black businesses fail. And that caught my attention. So when I went to actually see the comments on the post, I was blown away. I mean, mm-hmm. people were just really, really chiming in. And as I was reading more posts, were being posted, uh, and it just kept going and kept going and kept going. And and I really saw in that in that that there is a real serious divide between the black consumer and the black uh, entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Now, what what do you think that divide is? You think there's lack of understanding on the part of the consumer, or uh, lack of understanding on the part of um, the the the, the uh, owner? Um, what do you think that is? Well, on 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 both sides of the coin, there there is some uh, lack of acknowledgement to quite a few different things. Uh, one of the things I know on the um, business side, the, the uh, entrepreneur side, I've seen it for myself. I've been in stores. Uh, black businesses were on their shelves. They have products that they bought from big chain uh, retail stores, and they put those products on the shelf, and they sell them for a little bit more than what that uh, retailer would sell it. And, and they sell that to our people. Um, and that that right there is something that when I see that, I already I instantly know that uh, they're buying products from a retailer because they don't either know how to get the product at the right price to put on their shelf, which is in, the, in, in, in all instances is never good for the for the store because, if I'm selling a product with Walmart's name on it and the customer knows that the product came from Walmart, well, that's not a good look for me. You know, uh, as as a business owner, there, there are things that you have to be in the know of in order to bring to the market a competitive price. And that one of those things is learning and knowing how to go directly to the source to purchase your goods, not from the middleman, not from the wholesaler, um, but directly from the manufacturer. And most times in business, I don't see that being done. And, and I say I don't see it being done. reason why I say that is because I can look at your price of your product and know exactly uh, pretty much that you didn't buy this from a manufacturer, you brought it from a wholesaler. Because most of us have what we, in this, uh, uh, what I say now, well, I call it a, a dope man's mindset. The dope man mindset is if I spend a dollar, I want to make a dollar. And so when you go into a lot of these stores in the urban community, a lot of the entrepreneurs that are, are coming up, uh, especially uh, in, the, in the 90s and in the, in the 2000s, a lot of those guys and, and, and ladies came out of the street life, or they, they were heavily influenced by the street life, the street hustle, um, myself included. Now, well, hold on. For- wait a minute. Wait, uh, hold on. Well, okay, so wait. So what is the complaint? Like, what is what problem are we talking about, like, right now concerning this? 
Well, there, there's a lot of problems. As I was reading the, uh, ooh, as I was reading the uh, 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 comments on the uh, post, I mean, there was so many things from the uh, lack of professionalism um, cost. Well, let me look here. Okay, so I actually myself posted this Tuesday at 8.28 a.m. from what Facebook tells me. That's when I posted it. I said, business owners, name something or things that can potentially ruin your business. And I told them to share and tag a business. So I'm going to read some of these, and then we can kind of go down the line and analyze them if, if it's possible. And again, if you all are on here or you're listening by computer and you would like to chime in, definitely do so. Just press star star so that we can um, get you on to chime in about these issues. And we definitely want to stay on topic um, for um, respect of time because, you know, if we have people that want to chime in, we want to be able to give them um, ample time to uh, talk with us. But uh, let's see here. So I have, again, the question was, Business owners, name name some things that can potentially ruin your business. And let's see. So somebody said poor bookkeeping. Now we know poor bookkeeping definitely can be true. Um, if you if you're not doing either some sort of QuickBooks system or pad and paper system, um, then you know how, how would you really know how much you're making? How would you know what's missing if some somebody's stealing something? Um, if you don't have some sort of uh, POS system, which you know we're working on getting a new POS system ourselves through uh, Clover, then I mean, really, it's kind of old school. Really trying to keep track of all those products, don't you agree, Robert? Oh, totally. Mhm mhm so poor bookkeeping is definitely one and that's from Tony J Harry I think that's my cousin yeah it must be I don't know him but yes then um somebody named Zach McGee says poor work ethic now when when Zach says poor work ethic what what stands out to you Robert well on the owner part of it you know um not having enough pride in uh, the presentation of your store, uh, being being there on time. Um, I mean, you know, and and closing on time. I mean, all of this. If if you're if you're training your customer, then you should be there when you say you're going to be there, and you should be open till the time that you say you're going to close. And, and, and all those things build customer confidence as well as customer loyalty. That's not just that alone, but that's a part of what builds customer confidence and customer loyalty to you. Right. I definitely agree with that. So poor work ethic is definitely one. Um, then Daryl Wilkins says lack of ground rules for employees. Uh, how about that one, Robert? What do you think about not having ground rules uh, for employees? Well, the thing about that, you know, when when the owner is there and people, you know, a, a lot of times we tend to hire people that know us and are familiar with us, and and in that case, they don't take us as serious. Uh, you have to have a system and or create a system that works in your business for your business and, and be able to say here this is how we operate and you as the owner cannot deviate from that map that that map is to get you to a certain destination every day by the end of the day they know exactly what to do uh, and, 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 and if they're looking at you for direction, then you have to be as disciplined to what you say you don't want to do or, uh, or, or must be done as they have to be the same way. But you are the owner is the example. Right. I definitely agree with that. And I think for employees, you really have to be sort of 
apparent to them sometimes, um, for lack of a better term, but it is your business. So if you're not looking out for your business, nobody else is going to do that. But um, you have to recognize what are the strengths and the weaknesses of employees. Don't put them someplace where they're weak because you're just setting them up to fail. If they're not good at um, uh, buying goods or going out to get goods, it don't, then don't send them. Don't send them out to do that stuff. You know, they may be better at, um, you know, stocking shelves or uh, uh, greeting customers or something like that. Um, I mean, of course, there's many tasks that they could be good at. But if you see that they're a little weak in a certain area and they might need a little work, well, definitely work with them, but don't shove them in, in a, an area where they're either not so comfortable or, you know, they're just, you know, they're not, not really good at all. That That's my take on um, the employee situation. And ground rules, I mean, for me, those are very, very serious. Like, for one thing, um, I don't enjoy any type of smoke. So if I'm hiring you, and I know it's 420 all day, every day for a lot of people, but if I'm hiring you, I better not smell any kind of weed. I mean, I just, I cannot deal with that. I know a lot of people smoke weed and they smoke cigarettes and all that, but I am highly, highly allergic to all that stuff. It just makes me feel sick. So I can't, I can't smell that. So that would have to be a ground rule. Um, you know, you must, you must be drug free. You know, if you have to do that, that on your own time, then that's fine. I don't know what kind of, um, a card that you may have to present that would make me have to let you work. I don't know. I'm not really facing that right now, but for me personally, my ground rule is you cannot smell like cigarettes or marijuana. That's just real. Um, let's see what else. Let me, I don't know. Me, There's this. I'm looking at uh, on, on, on this other site, there's a young lady on this site. She said, marketing, marketing, marketing is crucial. Marketing your store is very crucial. Marketing whatever you do is very crucial. You should be on social media. You should be on every free uh, media outlet that you can be on to market, to let the people know what it is that you're doing. You just, you got to put it out there. And and don't worry, don't be afraid to spend money with Facebook or other uh, avenues of, of marketing to get yourself out there. Another lady, uh, her name is Lenny Cleveland, she she speaks about an experience that she had. She said she went into the, uh, a salon to get her locks done last year. The, she said the salon was a piece of work. I mean, you go into a business and the business is in construction as you walk in, but very disorderly, that's not good. First, when I walked in for my appointment, uh, I spoke, but no one spoke back. That's that's a killer. For, that's like, I mean, that's the that's the stake in the heart right there. That for me, that's a that's just a I'm gonna turn around and leave this business. You know, uh, she said they just looked at me and went back to what they were doing. Then she said, uh, as she went further into the, the establishment. There was a room next to the bathroom that they made into a makeshift studio, <laughs> and the barber and his friends was back there rapping so loud. She said, "She said it was it, it, it sounded so bad, and, and it just really, you know, teed her off." If if we got a business, and it's a barber or whatever business it is, then you should really be concerned with other activities in that business. We have to be professional in business. I, and being professional is not being white. Being professional is knowing that you need the customer to return back to your establishment for as long as you are in business or the both of you are living. Right. Well, there's no such thing as, as whiteness in customer service. I mean, poor customer service does not get you the return customer. Whatever it is that you put out as a business owner is what you will get back, you know. Um, and like we talk about all the time, you have to essentially become an actor. You know, it is not your customer's problem that 
um, you burnt your toast this morning and so you're upset and you got a sour feeling and you're up, you know, you're just mad. You need to be an actor. If the customer that came into your store is always on your nerves, it doesn't matter. If that person is a paying customer or a future paying customer, they're coming into your establishment, you need to become an actor and make that person feel like they are welcome in your store. Um, because your goal is not to make friends. And a lot of people, you know, mis- mistake that. You're not there to make friends. You may gain some friends or alliances or whatever, but you are there to gain a customer base. So, I mean, that's very important to know. Um, as we look down our list, I guess we can kind of go back and forth because you have a list and I have a list, Robert. Uh, but I have one from uh, Haki. Uh, he says, greedy advisors. <laughs> So I think this subject kind of hit close to home for him. And I I know about the greedy advisor experience. I know what he's talking about. Um, But yeah, I mean, you can't be dealing with greedy advisors. You got to get advisors that really are interested in uh, making your business grow. What do you have next, Robert? Oh, man. Um, There there are so many on the... uh, Oh wow! On the on the business itself, uh, it, there's not enough money spent on advertisement. Uh, then I, I got some here. Let's see. Another reason why black businesses fail: business owners reject criticism and see it as a diss or attack instead of realizing that we are telling you this to help you get out your feelings. You know, that's, that's a big deal. That's a really big deal because if you notice these highly reputable places, you know, they and they put it on the back of their van. How are we doing? You know, they have comment cards. Like even in Costco, you could fill out, you know, the card and, and tell them actually how are they doing. More people should do that because that is going to help you sharpen your skills in your business. Don't be so offended with someone. Tr- now, I mean, I know that there's some people that complain about everything. But even that, you could take to heart and use it as a tool to help you progress in business. Exactly. exactly. Okay. So I think that uh, we've got Scotty. He's got uh, comments. Uh, hi, guys. How are you doing tonight? And, of course, Queen. Wonderful. Thank you hi. so much. Hey, Robert. Um, I love it when y'all do these type type of shows. Being an entrepreneur myself, I can relate to a lot of the stuff that you all talk about. Um, just real quick, um, you read the comment where the person, well, I think it was Robert made the comment about advertising. And let me just share some of the experiences I've had with uh, clients in terms of advertising on Black Talk Radio Network. And um, also, you could. Pro- I'll probably uh, ask, there's some questions related to this. First, let me get to the questions. So, if you are a new business um, in advertising, of course, I know that you want both. But um, in terms of branding, uh, in and in terms of sales, so obviously you want you know your advertising to convert to sales. Um, But if you a new business, it still may take some time, you know. And so, but Mm -hmm. I think many of them forget the branding aspect. Um, For example, like we charge uh, $10 per 1,000 views if you got a banner ad on our website or posted um, or did the audio ad, which will forever be heard in the podcast because what we play on these various programs is also going to be in the podcast. So, I had a client one time, they spent like, they spent, they spent like $40 for 4,000 lists for 4,000 views and they got those views and, um, also, you know, uh, promoted their video. So they got the views that they paid for and they didn't want to renew, um, you know, the, uh, campaign because they didn't get any sales. So what what I mean how do you understand what I'm getting at mm-hmm. here what what's mm-hmm. what's important uh what's more important Absolutely. I, um so yeah if you could chime in on that Absolutely okay. Well I do understand what you're saying but people just are not patient Can you hear me Yes I hear you 
Okay, people are just not patient. Um, and that, that comes with like the new entrepreneur experience. And people have a big ap- apprehension, I should say, apprehension and anxiety about spending their money. You know, because if you have just come off of a job and you have put your best foot forth in opening your business, a lot of times you're like watching every penny. So if I've put my money into this advertising and I didn't get like 20,000 people calling me or even one, then I might be a little anxious and say, oh, my goodness, well, that didn't work. And that may be part of some sort of mentoring that has to go on. Uh, from you to say to them, you know, this may not blow up the first time and it takes a little while at times for uh, your listening audience to catch on and you just never know who needs what at what time. So my best advice to you is, you know, advertise a few times, you know. Um, this is definitely money well spent toward your business and it is podcasted so it will it will forever play. You know, but I would encourage you to just do it a couple times. So, I mean, uh, you know, people are funny, but, um, you know, it, it's it's us as the owners to know our industry and to share what we know about our industry with the people who are buying from us. Right. And, and, and think about with the advertising, uh, again, we go back to the social media outlets that, uh, are available to us, and, and pl- places like Facebook is reaching billions of people uh, throughout the world. That sometimes that's not necessary for certain businesses, but if we need that format, do you should use that format? Because I mean, if like for instance, I pay a um, dollar a day to advertise on Facebook, which would reach here locally. Uh, certain ads I send abroad, but most of my ads are basically in the St. Louis, East St. Louis area. So I pay a dollar a day. That dollar can reach anywhere from, I think it's like five to 700 people uh, with that ad for a dollar. Now, if I can just get five people out of 500 people to, as a result of that ad in a day or uh, even in five days, They'll spend enough money to pay for that ad for me. But the thing of it is, is to constantly mm-hmm. keep that advertising going. Because the moment you stop, the moment people stop knowing about you. Now, mm-hmm. on the side of that is, Scotty, you got great customer service. You, you got, with what you know to do with what you do, you, you have great customer service. So that's going to keep people talking about you. That's what we strive to have down at the flea market where we're at. That's what's kept me for the last 23 years in business. Mainly part of what has kept me there has been customer service. And when I say customer service, when you say something out of your mouth to the customer, it has to be the truth. It can't be where you're guessing or you think. I hate to go into establishments and they tell me, I think. Well, if you think, then you should know to get be informed. You shouldn't, you shouldn't even allow yourself to say, I think. The, the, the wording is very crucial because you should be in the know. When it, when, when, whatever it is that you do, you should be in the know of what you're doing and your word is bond. When you give your word, when you make your word, you put your word out there, then that's all the customer has to trust and believe in is your word. And once your word becomes valuable to the customer, once your, your word can carry you throughout your whole business uh, uh, life. But if your word is shaky and they've had, just one experience being black, if you have just one experience where they catch you up in a lie, chances are they're going to tell somebody else and tell somebody else, and, they go, and they're not going to come back and do business with you. So your word has to be, every time you open your mouth, truth, and knowing what your product is, knowing, giving the actual facts on your product. Yeah, word of mouth is everything, and that could be a bad thing or a good thing. And if it's a bad thing, 
sometimes it takes a little bit to clean that up. So yes, my goodness, definitely, definitely work on um, uh, truth. So we've got a comment here from John M. Coolidge Jr. Um, and it says, taking on a partner that has a new direction or separate vision in mind. Sometimes as a small business, this seems like an option if you can combine cash, capital, equipment. Maybe that person has, maybe they have some other valuable resource. You think it would be good to work together, but you end up letting the enemy sit right in your lap. Now that is so true what he said, you know, because as as people attempting and uh, promoting group economics, you know, we have been burned a few times because we do try to match ourselves up, up with somebody. We're A and they may, might be that B. Like maybe they have the money and we have, you know, something else, the know-how or whatever. But if they totally have a different direction and vision from what you thought in the beginning, that can be horrible. That could be a disaster. So I was actually listening to another radio program um, the other day. It was a business. AM radio is wonderful, but it was <laughs> it was a business uh, radio thing. And they were talking about just this very subject. They were saying, put everything in a contract, even if you have to write it on the back of a receipt write something out and you and that person come to some terms and sign it you know I mean I would take it a step further take it to the bank and get it notarized you know do it the right way but as you enter business with people don't just do it on the fly and just you know not have these things down you have to have these agreements written down because when an agreement is in writing each person can go reflect on what it is that uh, the mission was in the beginning and what we agreed upon and what each person's duties are. So definitely, you know, get that in writing so you don't have this big old disaster in the end. Um, it, the people in the, the the radio program told a story of a person that got in business with another person and the other person um, ended up deciding he wasn't going to be in business or something crazy happened. But he was able to go to the bank and take all the money out before the guy could go and say, hey, wait a minute, freeze the account or whatever. But because the other guy was on the bank account, uh, he took all the money. It was like $29,000. Now, that was crazy. So, we, you're right. <laughs> That's why we have to make sure we get things in writing. Don't just be all fluffy with people just because you get along with them. I mean, because when it comes down to money, oh, it can get ugly real quick, especially with us. So, yeah. Uh, what's the next one you have, Robert? That would be, give me one second here, uh, the next one, I, oh, that's a good one, too. Um, now, this is evidently from a black business person, uh, and I, I can very much, you know, agree with this. It says, no, well, I'm, I'm not going to totally agree with it, but I, I do understand. No support from the black community. They love to shop outside of race and always want a discount from black businesses. Now, that, uh, I mean, that is so very, very, very true. I mean, this is from Sunshine Bullock. And, and I have to say that is very, 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 very true. Now, this thing about love to shop outside of race, <laughs> that runs, that's so psychologically deep. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the way back from slavery and I would, I would even go into that Willie Lynch letter at making us hate one another. Mm -hmm. Because when I came back to St. Louis last year, um, and I experienced homelessness for the first time, I got with an African guy. We started moving around in the city, and we were actually selling movies, DVDs to these stores. And as I would will be in the store waiting to take care of the business and all these Arabs have stores in the I'm talking in the extreme worst parts of the black community and when I saw our people entering into those stores they had the most delightful attitudes with these Arab people like they were so happy to spend their money with them and it just blew me away. Store after store, I would see.
see the same thing. And our women, the young ladies that would be in and out of the store, they would, these Arab guys would be flirting with them, and they would be a hee hee and then a ha ha. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah, and that doesn't help. That what they do is again, they're actors. Remember, I said that before. We need to become actors. They're actors. They don't give a good gosh darn about no black woman, no black man, or your your little children or anything like that. But whatever they have to do to make you feel like you need to come in there and shop, even if that means flirt with you, they're going to do it because they're going to get their, their money, and that's just all there is to it. Um, me, personally, I don't frequent those places. If I don't have to go, I don't go because it's actually offensive to me. And I told you, uh, if if I get to be mayor of this town, all the liquor stores are closing. You can have a regular store, but no liquor store is going to be allowed in here. Uh, and that's the that's right. just the real of it all. So, so the part about, you know, getting the discount from black businesses, this now here's the dilemma that most businesses that are like in Grand Slam Marketplace, uh, they didn't call it a flea market, but we relate to it as a flea market. But 90% of all business done out of Grand Slam Marketplace is brand new products, brand new items. So, it, it, I mean, the, we are, the, all the vendors are paying wholesale prices from a legitimate wholesaler uh, on these prices, yet our people are coming in there literally uh, uh, almost twisting the, 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 the entrepreneur's arm with the leverage of knowing that they need to sell the goods so the consumer come in and say, well, I, I, I'll go somewhere else and buy it. Or here. Now, we, me, UCC, we hear this quite often. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, to the point to where it is sometimes spiritually hurting. Because you, when you hear stuff like, uh, well, how much is this Dove soap? And we say we have it for $4. Well, I could go to uh, family dollar and get it less than that and I'll say or you may say well pull your smartphone out and let's see exactly what it costs at family dollar and at family dollar the same size bottle it could be four dollars and fifty or four ninety nine and they would say I mean and have said stuff like well I'm just gonna go to the store because that's not a deal for me buying it here Right. Well, I have, a, again, that takes me back to my Actors Guild. <laughs> I have a script for all these people. There's nothing that anybody's ever said that I don't have a script for. Some people you don't want to waste your time with if they want to go shop at another store, because that's what it is, and that's what I make sure that I tell them. This is a store. Uh, Walmart is a store, just like this is a store, Okay. So you have come here and you expect some kind of deal. Well, it is already a deal because let me show you, our prices are generally a dollar cheaper than the stores that you would normally go to. Now, because you come to the fleet market, you expect something else um, and you're probably getting something else. People probably do mark their things down for you, but that's because they don't have the confidence to sell to you because they're, you know, they don't know what to do at this point because people coming in and expecting a deal. But think about it. People in here, they're renting a space, they have a store, and they're selling these products to you, but they can't really feed their families, much less pay their booth rent by giving you a deal, her a deal, and everybody else a deal. Now, what if I came to your job and I asked you for a deal? Would you be able to give me a deal? No, you wouldn't because you don't even work for yourself. So let's not go there. I mean, there's so many things that you can say to people in a non-ignorant way because we could get ignorant right back with them, but there's no reason to do that. Like I said, there are people that are there and they will be educated or they will get the educated information and you'll change their mind. I mean, I always change their mind, you know, unless it's the ones that just walk out, but you got to give them that information. You know, you're not being... Uh, uh, railroaded by us. We're we're giving you the best price that we can give you. Can you say that about Walmart? Absolutely not. So you know you just have to again be an actor, and and don't get emotional and have a script. 
you know, just log in your mind these different things that people are saying when they get angry. You know, they're angry. They were angry before they got to you. So they're angry. Just have a script for them. Just try to put that fire out, you know, walk softly and carry a big stick and all those other quotes. But just, you know, you you are in control of the situation. You just have to speak to them in a way that either has them shop or gets them out of the store. That's what I always think. Here's another comment that I ran across twice already that uh, black retailers or black business people only trying to reach black consumers. And and, and that, that right there definitely is a true statement because, like I said, and I always say, have said this about being in business. Being in being in business, why I, I didn't want to uh, 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 call my business a black-owned business because I'm, I'm, I'm black in business, and business has no color barrier. It's Asians in business, whites in business, we blacks in business, so... We want to be able to have products, goods, and services to to be able to provide for everyone. And mm-hmm. the goal is has to be much bigger than just the uh, core group that that we reach on a day to day basis. White folks, Asian folks, and Arab folks have been getting our money as long as we can remember here in America. So. My goal personally is to have a business where I can intrigue white folks, Asian folks, African folks, and all other groups of people to come in and spend money with me by having common products that everybody needs. Not only that, but bigger than that is once I open my mouth, they are delighted to come in and shop with me because when they hear me talk to them, I'm not trying to say anything crazy. I'm not trying to mislead you by trying to mislead you in selling. I'm going to speak straight talk to you. I am concerned with how's your day. I'm not just asking that question. I'm very concerned with my customer as when they come into the store. I'm concerned with how is your day going? Because that could be conversation if there's time. But for the most part, I want that customer, all customers, to come into our establishment and feel secure, feel safe in knowing that what we're telling them is not just to get your money. I don't want to just be able to get your money right now and then run away and go and spend it foolishly. No, my concern is in knowing that you know now you know that you have a trustworthy business that you can come into and spend your money with. So we should be reaching outside of just the black community. We should be trying, you're in business. You're in business to make dollars from everybody that you come in contact with. That's the, that's the whole thing about being in business. Right, right. And I want to also add, you know, I mean, I see the difference in when the customers come into our space versus going into the larger space. I mean, the first thing that they say when they walk in is, ooh, it smells good in here. And we know that when you appeal to the senses, that sets the atmosphere for the shopping, whether it be whether it be the music or what it smells like, what it looks like. You know, you're setting the stage and the tone of how that interaction with the customer is going to be. So you you, you are the one that controls that. So if you do perhaps have a bad interaction with a customer, and this sounds crazy, but no, you need to look around and you need to see what it is that you see in your place that might be disturbing. Maybe your your items are all in a disarray. Maybe it smells funny, you know, Uh, maybe, you know, maybe they're hearing some crazy music, you know, but you definitely want to set the tone and the stage for the customer to have a great experience. Like I said, when they come into our establishment, that's the first thing they say, oh, it smells good in here. And I'm like, oh, yep, this is why it smells good in here. And I'm able to actually turn that into a selling moment immediately. And again, that is why you're there. You're there to sell. You're not there to make friends. You're not there to get a, a, a date. 
You're not there to do any of those things. So if you are not intriguing the customer, the customer in some kind of way concerning your products and your services, you're not in business because that's what you're supposed to be doing. And another thing that we do is we offer money back guarantee on all of our products. Now that's another thing that people um, don't like about doing business with black people because they may buy something and something breaks down or whatever and then the people don't want to give the money back. And I understand there's two sides to every story. Now some people like they might buy a, a, a bottle of juice and drink the whole bottle of juice and be like, oh, I didn't like it, and then try to bring it back. Well, we're not talking about that customer. I'm talking about the one that may buy a pair of earrings from me, and then um, she put it on, and it broke off in her ear or something crazy that I could have been sued for. And I'm just acting crazy like, oh, no, you broke that, uh, this and that, or whatever. No, your job is to de-escalate that situation as much as you can. You know, you can't you can't save every situation, but if you step back and you analyze and try to figure out what it is that you can do, trust me, there is something you can do. Even if that's talking in a nice, calm voice and not having a stank attitude towards this person that is bringing the problem to you. You know, you need to remain uh, in a calm demeanor so the problem does not escalate further. Um, you know, as I get into this, I need to remind everybody that um, they can call in at one 510 9025 or 704-802-5056. Press star star if you would like to jump in on our conversation. Um, again, we are talking about your beef with black businesses. You are talking to, are you listening to CC and Brother Robert? So, um, Robert, what do you think about that, what I just said, you know, with the whole atmosphere? Well, yeah, definitely, because it's two, you said a couple of things that I, I'm, I'm going to go start from the later, uh, the latter part, which uh, when it comes to uh, the customer service as a return of a product, um, we offer 100% money back guarantee household free. Because let me tell you something, business owners. If you now you you know when you've been scammed or whatever, but if you're able to deal with your manufacturer on the product that you're selling, and the person brings that product back with all parts intact, you can return that product back to the manufacturer. Okay, for one. Now, why should you accept the product back? Because a it's a good look on your business. They can't say nothing negative about even if the product didn't truly work, they can't say, well, anything negative about the business. That's something good that they can say about the business. Two is your goal for every customer should be, I want to retire or go to my grave with that customer's grandchildren still coming to my store. Right. Because and you, yeah, that's true. I mean, and I'll just put this piece in there. I mean, I see people coming in there um, very excited about you because of previous uh, businesses that you've owned. They're, they're just so excited to see you. And that's because they remember your great customer service. Exactly. And, and that's the thing that I've always kept in mind because I always said, being black in business, no, you don't have access to capital like other people do. No, there's a lot of things that most black people that go into business don't have knowledge of. So when I first started in business, I said, at least I'm going to have good customer service is going to be one of my strong points and being able to take less sell the product for a little bit less. I wanted, Walmart was always my focus, my competition. I'm a small business. I don't have the overhead that Walmart has, the lighting, the electricity, the gas, uh, the employees that they have right. to pay. The, 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 if they don't own the building, they're leasing the building. A small business does not have that type of overhead. You should be able to beat Walmart prices in small businesses. Two things that you that most small businesses fail to do, 
One is both of them are very crucial. One is you don't own the real estate that you're operating out of. So now you're paying rent here and rent in your home. Two, you don't go to trade shows in your industry. So you're not dealing with manufacturers. You're dealing with middlemen, and they're going to raise the price from the manufacturer's cost at least 35% more when that 35% that they're getting of your money could be paying your bills. So when you don't have that type of mathematical equation in your favor, then it's, it's not going to, your longevity is pretty much uh, calculated. You're not going to succeed. The only way that I've been able to personally make it in business all this time, good customer service is definitely one, but bigger than my customer service is the mathematical setup of my business. I lived upstairs over the building, over the business, and my business was downstairs, and I owned the property paying only one mortgage note, which the first one I had was four eighty four fifty nine a month. I paid four hundred and fifty nine dollars a month for seven years with a business downstairs and my store my my apartment upstairs. Who cannot win with that type of mathematical equation? So we have to be as business owners. We have to be more knowledgeable in business in order to stay in business. Right. You definitely have to be strategic, and you cannot operate in the same way that you did as an employee. You know, people think, people have all kind of misconceptions about what being in business is about, some bad and some good. Some think it it's going to be some sort of lazy work. Uh, it's not. Actually, you're most likely going to be working a little bit harder, at least at first, to get things going. But you have to strategically plan things. You have to pare down. You have to really eliminate some things that, that you're used to. It doesn't mean that you can't have luxuries and you can't have fun, but some things are just unnecessary. But think about it. When you are working a job... Um, Just pretty much everything is put in place for you. You just go to a building. That's it. You go to a building and then you do your job and then you go home. Well, when you are the business owner, when you're an entrepreneur, you definitely have to make sure all things are in place so that you can even work to do what you need to do. And hopefully it's something that you love, of course, because I don't know why you'd be doing something you didn't love, but you just have to really put things in place like Robert was talking about. Um, you know, making sure that your your place is secure. If you have a business and then you live over the top of it, I mean that that's excellent. You're making money in that way too. Um, yeah. So I mean, there's a lot of things that uh, need to be. Uh, you need to pay attention to a lot of things in business. So I'm looking at another. Uh, somebody named Lamont Ryle says employees that don't care about your business and then somebody else responded to him by saying most employees don't care about the business they care about their paycheck which is very true you know right. and 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 as a business owner of course you would want someone to have the same passion that you have about your business but that doesn't exist even in your lineage your children your children don't love that business like you love that business Um, Now, we did see some instances in uh, when we were at the trade show. I talked about this before. We were at the trade show. We saw um, a lot of Jewish people, Jewish people, let me put emphasis on that, um, there with, you know, their families, their groups or whatever. um, But we, we saw two young men. One was like a really young guy who was like 19 or 20 or something. And he was there and he had his little brother with him. So it was like he was mentoring his brother, but it was really their father's business. But the father had so much trust in his son because he had reared him in such a way that he was there totally handling the trade show. Now, that is a big deal. I don't know. I mean, you guys, most of you have not been to a trade show, but that is a big deal for a father to be able to send his son with the younger son to a trade show. Oh, my goodness. That guy is ready for business on his own. And I'm pretty sure when he goes back home, he runs the business and the dad can attend to whatever other multi-million dollar business they have going on. But I'm telling you, that was quite impressive because 
today's children usually are not too much interested in the business like that. They might dabble in a little bit and they might circle back around later on. But from what I see, these children want to get out. They want to get their own experience and then maybe, maybe later on come back and, you know, do something with, with the parents or whatever. But, um, yeah, and that's concerning them being employees too. So it gets kind of touchy there. Um, now, me personally, I forced my children to work in my business. They didn't have a choice because they were 13 and 14. But, yeah, that's a whole other story. Um, let's see here. Uh, J- H. Joseph, huh? You, now, 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 on the employee level, the get employee, you just spoke on that. Now, we did experience when we went to the, um, the Wynn Resort Hotel. Those employees were so happy with their jobs. And I still can't figure out exactly why, except for, again, it's the atmosphere. That place was friendly. They all were in uniform. I mean, it was just the whole experience was something that the employees experienced themselves. So, you know, there's psychology behind this stuff and people don't realize that. But everybody is in order. Like the um the hostesses, they had on the same outfit. The people busting the tables, they had the same outfit. The managers had on the same outfit. The cooks or the chefs, they had on the everything was in order. And it was like um just beauty begets beauty. I mean, for lack of a better description, the place was beautiful, the people were beautiful beautiful attitudes and the manager that we met she was actually she was a wonderful black lady and the people that had been there we asked them how long you've been here oh we've been there we've been here like since it opened like 13 years i mean everybody we talked to pretty much have been there since the place opened what does that tell you they're happy to be there um so yeah i mean it, it it gets real it really does um but we all need um we all need training on how to hire the right employees. And we're actually going through that right now. And we know that there's um, there's um, sources out there. There's like monster.com. There is indeed.com. There's Craigslist. Uh, there is, I sent you one, Robert. Do you see that? That Oh, you, it's probably way back somewhere else. I don't know where it is. But there are a lot of hiring sites out there that you can promote your business on of course there's Facebook you know there's some Facebook groups like in your specific area that deal with people needing a job me personally I don't really want to deal with nobody needing a job I mean just like in a real desperate kind of way because it makes me feel like I'm going to be dealing with somebody who is acting like you know they're just glad to get it for now and they're not really excited about being there you know what I mean Robert oh I know exactly what you mean yeah. See, I want somebody that is skilled in the area and they do it like it's breathing. You know, they don't necessarily have to love me or my business, but they they love what they do. So they're just going to do it. Right. You know, and, and I've come to the conclusion, like we were at the store today and I'm, I'm always talking to young people about opening businesses. Oh, uh oh, we definitely have to take a break. <laughs> Everybody, you're listening to BIB Radio on Black Talk Radio Network. Uh, we'll be right back after these short messages. Talk Radio, your choice for digital black radio. New black media for the new millennium. All right, we're back. Thank you for joining us on BIB Radio. I am looking and we have a caller that has raised their hand, I believe. It is uh, last 40109. Are you there, caller? 
Yes, I'm here. Hi, who we, who we have today on the, the radio? Oh, yes, first of all, sorry. Hi, how are you guys doing tonight? We um, are excellent. Tia. Thank you, fine. Um, <laughs> my name's Tia Jenkins. I actually am the owner of a company called Ink Blockers Photography. Uh, Tia, we can't really hear you. Your phone's kind of going in and out. You're the owner of a... Hold on one second. Okay. All right, can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I, um, I'm the owner of a company called Ink Blotches Photography, and I do photography work. Okay. Tell us about that. Uh, well, I started four years ago, um, and it, it I would say it was an accident, but I know that God did it on purpose, so mm -hmm. it was not an accident. It, I just wasn't expecting it. Um, and um, I started off really small just doing things for my friends, just kind of because I had a camera. And then people just kept asking me to take pictures, and it developed into a business. Mm -hmm. And um, this is my first time listening in. I actually saw the link on a group that I'm in on Facebook. Um, and I decided to listen in to see if I could get some advice. Um, but I decided to chime in on kind of why I think um, black businesses fail. Um, and kind of like one of the biggest issues I've came in contact with since owning my business. Yes, please share with us. Uh, well, I have a friend who read this um, business book, and I could really, really relate to it. For a majority of my life since I was 16, I'm 26 now, so for like the past 10 years, um, I just quit my job and went full-time with my business last May. So it'll mm. be a whole year on actually May 1st. Wow, congratulations. Um, congratulations, right. Thank you. Um, one of the things that I've noticed is I'm stuck in the mindset of being a technician, and I'm really good at it. I am really good at working with customers. I'm really good at making people happy. I'm really good at getting the job done, but I have no manager experience. I have no ownership experience. I have not went to school for business. So when the technician part is over, um, it was really a whole entire learning experience, and I'm still learning on how to be the manager, how to um, be over employees, how to be the owner, how to keep the books, how to keep the scheduling. I have now a hundred different jobs when I'm so used to just having one. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Sound mm -hmm. like sound like your mother uh, running your house. Yes. You okay. So let because me say this to you, Tia. I'm sorry, Robert. Um, yeah. You you totally are the business owner. So, mm -hmm. like, when you worked a job, you just kind of just showed up, right? Yes. Okay, so now you are everything to your business. Now, you want solutions, so, of course, we offer mentorship, and you can email us or you can reach out to us on Facebook um, our email address is we are blacks and business at gmail dot com or whatever group that you saw us posting. You can definitely reach out to us that way. But what I would say to you is, you just need an assistant, and that doesn't look like what you think it looks like. We could definitely make sure that you have an assistant to help you for a few hours a week to stay on task. So mm -hmm. you don't have to feel overwhelmed and stressed out and pulling your hair like, oh Lord, how can I do this? It just, it, it, you just need some assistance. Um, but Robert, what were you going to say? I'm sorry. Now, let me say this to you. That transition, you can best relate to how to make that transition by, if you pay the bills in your house, if you are the parent of the children or you have children, you have to delegate to them uh, things to do. 
you you re- I, I say this to homemakers all the time. I just put a post on Facebook. You all all people who run a household are entrepreneurs and don't know it. Because everything mm-hmm. that you just described you have to do in the business, you have to do that at home. You gotta make sure Amarin get they they money, the key the clean glass, the water company, the mortgage company, uh the insurance company. Uh, you got to make mm-hmm. sure that the children get to and from where they supposed to be on time, dressed. And, uh, you got all those different uh, uh, things to do at your home. So your home prepares you, if you really can see it and get what I'm saying. Your just just being a homemaker, uh, a, a person that has a family that works and pay the bills, that really prepares you for entrepreneurship. But most times we don't have anybody that can say that to us and that can relate it to us because your home is truly a business a, a uh-huh. business a, when you when you when anywhere where there's a transfer of money involved that's business and your home is your first place of business now just take everything that you do from your home just now just take a note of it from this point on and and look at what you're doing at home. You're running a business, and that's the same thing, the same uh, system or setup that it would be in a business. You may have a few more people that you're dealing with outside of the people in your home. You know, uh, uh, where where you maybe where you get your supplies from, or you know, going to industry shows, this stuff like that. But it's pretty much the same thing. You just have to see it in that light, sister. Mhm. Okay. So, the, does this all make sense to you? It does, and I've I do have a ch- a child, <laughs> um, okay. so it makes a lot of sense. And I n- nobody has ever told it to me that way. Mhm. Mhm. Okay. So, so definitely, but as 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 uh, but this, and, and you can definitely, like the sister say, reach out to us, and we are blacks in business, and and we can definitely. Um, be of assistance to you. Uh, schedule a, uh, a consultation with us. Cause see the mm-hmm. things, the the things that I've come to grow to know in business over the last twenty three years. I I look at it from a non conventional way of thinking. And and in today's world, you have to be a non conventional thinker in order to make it because everything that was conventional is no longer the the, the way of doing things. Everything now is mm-hmm. non conventional. Who would have thought uh Uber would be the third largest employer in the whole on the whole planet Earth? Uber. And all they did was took <laughs> what was being offered and made it better. They didn't change they didn't ch- they didn't try to reinvent the wheel. They just took the same service and put a new spin on it, and now they're crushing the game. And they, so, so this is we just have to, you know, uh, not try to reinvent the wheel, but actually be able to sit back and look at uh, what what it is that we personally are actually doing. And, and, and if you don't hear this out of somebody's mouth, as you just said, you wouldn't look, you would have never thought to look at it that way. So that's what we offer. We are Blacks in Business, or B.I.B. Blacks in Business Radio, and our, our, everything that we put on our pages is to inspire you, is to intrigue you to think outside of what you've normally been taught. And that's the problem. Most people have not had a thought, something to trigger thought. And so this is what makes us uh, uh, somebody that you need to sit down and talk People with, like, throws up in my hair. Thought, and we're going to walk you through the process as well, sister. So uh, hopefully you got something out of this, and hopefully uh, in your business you could pay attention to what's being said on this show because definitely these things that we're talking about tonight, uh, will de- you will come face-to-face if you haven't already come face-to-face with them you definitely going to come face to face. It doesn't matter what industry black people are in. We have mm-hmm. uh, issues that we have to work out among ourselves and uh, uh, as business people and as well as consumers. 
Okay, so what mm-hmm. we need to do now is, Tia, we need to invite you to reach out to us afterwards because we got to segue into our next segment now uh, for uh, okay. lack of time and for respect of time. But thank you so much for calling in. Please listen to us every Thursday at the same time and listen to our old podcast. Reach out to us after the show, okay? Okay. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, guys. Now, uh, what we got to do is wrap this portion up. We've got more to talk about. We want to get into the issue of the Shea Moisture. Uh, What was that all about? So let's go ahead and go into that commercial so we can go into that. People would, like, throw stuff in my hair, and then I'd just be walking, and there'd be, like, little paper balls in my hair. I hated it because it's like, oh, I have this, and people make fun of me for it. It was lots of days staring in the mirror like, I don't know what to do with it. I just didn't feel like I was supposed to be a redhead. I dyed my hair blonde for seven years of my life, platinum blonde. I didn't really embrace my natural hair. But then, you know, as I got older, I learned how to do it and I learned how to love it. Shea Moisture, holy grow right here. It just gives us all the results that we need. It's kind of that go-to product. I think a good hair day is the best kind of day. I feel like I have conquered the world. I love my hair. I love the volume. I love the curl. I love the texture. I love everything about it. Everything about it. Everybody. Everybody. Everybody everybody gets love. Okay, everybody, we're back. Again, you're listening to BIB Radio on Black Talk Radio Network. Please support blacktalkmediaproject.org. Listen to us here every Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. We have segued into the next portion of our show. Um, And, you know, Robert, what do you know about this Shea Moisture issue? Um... Not much at all. I've heard a few uh, clips from different people being upset with the company. Uh, and, and, I mean, I don't, I, my take on it is maybe not what most people would, 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 would be thinking, but my take on it. Uh, and I don't know a whole lot about the, the moisture company. All I know is with business, businesses change. And BET for a long time was Black Entertainment TV. And they made him an offer that he couldn't refuse. Or maybe they made him an offer that he couldn't refuse. And so he sold. And I said that twice, I know. But he sold the company so there's no longer as it used to be black entertainment now you got other people that's you know that's involved in that well as far as with this shea butter thing I see it in the same light that I see the BET and other black owned companies that have uh, sold out their interest to uh, um, other people other than ourselves and that's a business move that they make. I may not necessarily agree with it, uh, but it it didn't affect me because I don't use the product. No way. Maybe with women, you see, see, you you know about that product. I'm just a businessman, and uh, I mean, for me, I can't say if the move was wrong, personally, or right, because I don't know what kind of paperwork they were looking at in front of them. So, but. For a lot of people, they are really upset, and I have seen that. They are really upset about this move. So, I mean, mm-hmm. I kind of don't have much, a uh, lot to say about that. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, and that's probably because you really don't know. I mean, you're just looking at it like, okay, well, what I might know. I get that, and I understand it. Because for me, I don't even want to get involved with it. I don't even want to hear nothing bad about Shea Moisture. I use that. So, <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to hear anything bad about what they have to say, okay? Because one, I introduced it to you when we went, um, when we we're wholesale yeah, shopping. Sure I was like, I was like, see, this is how much it is wholesale. So 
That's why it's so expensive in the store because it's still expensive wholesale, okay? So we didn't end up getting any of the product um, to sell ourselves because, I mean, my gosh, some stuff just doesn't make sense. So we did not buy any. But again, I do. I use two of the Shea Moisture products and I'm, I don't know what's going to happen to my hair if I decide not to support. But um, I didn't really know what was going on. I was choosing not to really get into it. But because it is business and it is black business, I felt it important for us to at least talk about it. I know a lot of people are talking about it and they're griping, but hopefully we can add a different spin to it. Like Robert said, it is business. You know, people make different business decisions all the time. And we know that there's all kind of propaganda that goes on that feeds the monster and this and that. But, you know, personally, uh, today I did a whole lot of research. Um, and apparently, like a couple years ago, they did sell off a portion of the Shea Moisture. I don't remember what the percentage was. Uh, they, who did they sell it to? They sold it to... See, I don't have all the facts, but I know some of the facts. They did sell off a portion of the company. Um, and let's see here. Um, what I do know is recently they had a campaign going. And the, can the, the first part of the campaign that the people saw was that video that we played for you all. Now, there was no visual there because you're listening. No big deal. You can go ahead and Google Shea Moisture uh, commercial or Shea Moisture controversial commercial. And you'll see um, a, a very nice looking, like maybe biracial girl with long curly hair. She's talking about somebody throwing balls of something in her hair when she was younger. And I can imagine, you know, uh, biracial children do have it rough sometimes because the hair issue. And like, for instance, if they have a white mom, a lot of times the white mom does not know how to comb that hair. That's just what happens. Um, so this girl was explaining her issue. Now, this whole thing was kind of called hair hate. Then they show a white woman talking about her hair. Uh, oh, she dyed it this color or whatever. And I, at that point, I was confused. I'm like, okay, did Shea Moisture come up with some white products? Because when you see other hair products, uh, they have a certain line for like black people. You know, it's a specific line for just black people alone. Okay. Um, then there was another white woman that came on. So you have a biracial looking woman, a white woman, and then another white woman. All right. So then like one of the other um, YouTubers said, she then expected like a darker woman. Well, I did too. I was like, okay, um, where's the black woman? You know, and no like brown skin woman popped up. So then you're left to think, well, what is Shea Moisture doing? Like, who are they campaigning to? And so that's where the uproar, uproar started because this company was able to build themselves up uh, from black women who were having difficulty with their hair um, purchasing their products. So now all of a sudden, I guess, I don't know how sudden it is, but I guess it's been a long time coming. They've wanted to expand their products. And of course, like Robert said, that's a business move. It's understandable. But you don't forget your regular customer base, which was black women. Now, you gain all this capital in order to uh, or in um, enable to expand because of your customer base, which are black women. So why would you cut them out? Now, they claim that they had more than one campaign, but that was just the first one that showed. Well, in my opinion, if black women were the ones that built you up to this point, they should be in every campaign and every ad very much so represented because now look where we are. Um, Shea Moisture has been ostracized now in the black community. There are people saying that they're not buying the product anymore. There's people that said that they stopped buying it a long time ago because I guess in 2014, they started putting salt in the products. Now, we know that salt dries our hair out. You know, we, we need moisture. Shea moisture. Hello, we need moisture. But who needs their hair dried out? White people. You know, so these salt products have been added to the product line to help them with their oily hair. We don't have oily hair. We need oily hair, but we don't have oily hair. So that created a problem for people. They said they're not going to buy it no more. They stopped buying in 2014. And because of this last situation, they're like, oh, 
you know, I'm not buying it anymore. But you know how that goes. People say they're not buying stuff no more. It's just the latest thing everybody's upset about, you know. And then they go back to buy it. Like me, I, honest, I'm just going to be real. I, I don't know if I'm going to stop buying Shea Moisture because that works in my hair. And it's been a long time for me to actually figure out something that works in my hair. Now, there are other product lines that people could be willing to try. But we have to consider this. Shea Moisture is readily available in the store. I mean, there are a lot of stores, convenience stores that you can go into and get this product, okay? Um, Walgreens, CVS, I think they even have it in Whole Foods. I mean, just everywhere you go, you can get Shea Moisture. So it takes some serious planning to decide that you're going to really represent and go for another black hair care line that you may have to order, you know, online. I don't have time to order online. Well, I do. I mean, if I get my life together, but I mean, I'm thinking about it right now. It's just so much more convenient for me to go to the Walgreens and get my can of, of souffle, you know, and just be happy. But I mean, you know, a movement is a movement and you have to support it wherever you, wherever you feel like you can. Um, but I'm not going to bash anybody that still uses the product. I think that, you know, what they did was wrong. Um, but in the end, what are we going to do? Now, we went through many articles, and I see here where, you know, somebody wrote an article about the whole thing, and they actually posted here where uh, Tariq Nasheed, you know, I don't know how you feel about him, but Tariq don't want to boycott businesses like hi Sandra y'all don't want to boycott businesses like Asian nail shops that beat up black and white companies that support Trump but Shea Moisture is the issue so then so then um, so, uh, Shea Moisture tweeted back um, at Tariq Nasheed we can't thank you enough for your loyalty and support it's wonderful people like you that keep us going strong, Tariq, with a smiley face. And it's like, okay, how, is Tariq Nasheed really supporting them? He don't have no hair. Black women are the ones that are supporting you. So, I mean, I don't know why Tariq Nasheed felt the need to pipe into that situation. I mean, that that's part of the problem. I mean, that that's sort of a division issue. Like, why, why did he feel the need to even talk about that? I, I don't know. I guess because he can but um, yeah he decided to tweet about that and I thought that's kind of disrespectful because sometimes you just need to not say anything because he doesn't use Shea Moisture you know he cannot talk about uh, the passion that black women have about their hair you know um, I guess it can be somewhat um, it, it, can see, it can seem somewhat uh, crazy or silly or whatever when you consider all of the other issues that we have going on but our hair is a big thing. Our hair is a big thing. Whether you are wearing your own hair, whether you have shaved your hair off, or if you're getting it braided, or you decide to get 10,000 feet of weave sewn in, our hair is a big thing. So for Tariq Nasheed to, you know, even say anything about that, I mean, it just, you know, I don't, I don't really know that he needed to do that. Um, but, you know, he can. I mean, he's... He's a human. He can say whatever he wants to say. But um, we do have another video, and I wanted you guys to listen to uh, the perspective this young lady had um, on this whole Shea Moisture issue. I mean, I could tell she was very passionate um, about, um, how, you know, how she felt about them basically um, putting these women in this video. You know, she was basically saying to white women like what struggle have you really had have you had to go to school and people making fun of your hair have you had to go to a job and they tell you that if you don't straighten your hair that you you would need to not come back to work or you might not have your job I mean that has happened to many people to where they have worn their hair naturally and they've been sent home and what I learned was even recently in the military there was a problem with black women wearing their real hair. Now, we are in 2017, and there was a problem in the military where you even have to wear a hat. I mean, well, why are they worried about your hair? 
it was a problem for you to wear your real hair. So, you know, white women haven't had no real struggle about their hair. So for Shea Moisture to kind of go this direction, it just really offended a lot of people. And I can understand because, again, like if you look at Pantene, they have their own line called, or well, for black people called Relax and Natural. I think that's what it's called. I never bought it, but I think that's what it's called, Relax and Natural. But it seems that these other products, what they do is, okay, they're white for a hundred years. They're white, 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 white. Then because they want black money, of course, because the black hair care industry is very large. Then they create another line for black hair. Now, I wouldn't use that stuff anyway. I mean, because I know what's in it, but that's neither here nor there. They create a whole nother line for black women to use. Shea Moisture didn't do that, apparently. They just started, you know, doing different uh, concoctions to the original recipe to accommodate white women. You know, I'm talking about that salt again. If they put salt in the, the hair care, we can't have salt in our hair. That's just ridiculous. But yeah, so, I mean, that was that whole thing. I don't, I invite other people to talk about that um, on here, but I don't see anybody talking about that. And maybe in a podcast, if you're listening to this in a podcast, Please feel free to email us your comments at weareblacksinbusiness at gmail.com. If you don't want to talk and you're listening uh, via the internet, or like I said, you listen to it in a podcast, just let us know what you think about that whole Shea Moisture issue. I really didn't want to get wrapped up in it because I'm a little bit different. I don't like to get into other things that everybody else is getting into because a lot of times I feel like it's some kind of uh, ruse for whatever is really going on in the world. But, I mean, that was a serious thing because, for me, I do use Shea Moisture. I use it all the time. I use it every day, as a matter of fact. Um, I don't have their whole product line. I have two products, and that is all I need for my hair, okay? So, again, I feel the passion and understand, you know, what everybody else has been saying concerning the product. Now, what I wanted to do is play this video um, for us. And I needed to wait for our station manager, but he is not here. So what I am going to do is attempt. I'm going to attempt to play it through another source. So you all just bear with me. Um, well, Robert, now that you hear some of the facts, tell me what you think about that now. Well, I mean... I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe if I had a favorite barber and he decided to no longer cut black hair, and and, and I would probably be a little pissed off. Right. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I'm. I mean, businesses, for whatever reason, they concoct, uh, can switch the course of business at the drop of a dime, you know, and I, I mean, I don't think it was the best move that they could have made. Maybe this person who was in charge of uh, marketing, uh, PR, um, just uh, it really it made, a, I think, made a very bad choice of uh, allowing this video. I did hear that... Um, uh, one of the owners earlier when you was playing uh, the the video and uh, I think he was um, talking to was that Dr. Boyce hello hello am I on the air by myself right now no, no. can you hear me <laughs> I hear you now Okay, I don't know. The system kicked me off, but I'm back now. Um, okay. I did hear you because, of course, you're only on the other side of the wall. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so was that Dr. Boyce that that uh, that, that was interviewing the, one of the owners earlier? No, that was actually Roland Martin, and it wasn't one of the owners. It was one of the workers, and that was another issue. Like when you go through their LinkedIn uh, page and you see all of the people who work there. It's like a bunch of white people. So it's like, who's really doing this input here? You know, they had a black woman who was like the brand ambassador. But, you know, people ahead of the market and all that, uh, they were just, 
they were just white. Um, so now what we're going to do is listen to this video uh, with this uh, sister that was very passionate um, about how she felt uh, concerning um, what what was done here. So just listen for a minute, you guys, uh, right now. Even remotely close as a white woman. Stop trying to compare our struggles. Why do you have white women in a commercial for a brand that appeals to predominantly black people? Why do you have them in this commercial talking about hair hate? And oh, sometimes like in the mirror and I don't know what to do. And oh, I was always insecure about my red hair to the point where I always, where I always uh, dyed it blonde. Like why? Our, stop trying to compare our struggles. They're not the same. They're not the same. Did you ever go to a job with your red hair and someone tells you that it's unprofessional and that you need to change it? Do you ever go to school, like to school with your blonde hair and and people make fun of you. Oh my gosh, your hair is so blonde and stringy. No, I went to school with my wash and go, my kinky curly wash and go, and people was dead looking at me like, oh, bad hair day today? Like, I was the one who had a job that when I went, she tried to tell me that I either need to change my hair because it's too big and it's a distraction or I need to leave. Like... I doubt you ever had to go through that having blonde hair, straight hair, red hair, whatever, any of that. You have never, ever experienced that. And if you have, please feel free to comment below. So maybe I'll learn something new today. Maybe I'm totally wrong. But to my understanding, you stop, try just, stop just stop, just stop, just stop, just stop, just stop, just stop trying to compare the struggle. It is not the same thing. It's not. It's just not. Until you've been in school and teased to the point where you're coming home crying every day, until you've been teased for your hair, for really having blonde, straight, or red hair, until you've gone to a job and felt like you're being discriminated against because you don't look like everybody else approaches you and tells you, hey, your hair is a distraction. You need to take it down or go home. Until you've experienced those things or anything even remotely close to this i don't want to see you in a commercial talking about hair hate i really don't really 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 don't want to hear it i don't let's just stop okay you they just have plenty of representation like that's just that's my thing white women have always and will always have majority of the representation in our stores in our media our commercials everything like you guys do not experience the same things that we go to and it is beyond offensive to even hear you or to even think that you think our struggles are similar because CC no, dropped off the I board. Uh, you got to take he over until she called back in, Robert. Okay. Well, you knocked off the board. Yeah. So I, I guess, you know, listening to this uh, video here um, with the young lady um, expressing her disappointment with this whole uh, uh, sequence of events with this Shave Moisture Company uh you know, and it's it's, it's strict. It's definitely uh, for I can understand where a woman who is used to using this product is, con is committed to using the product because the product came out as a um, a product marketed to black people and black people supported the product. It was black owned, and then uh, they sold out. I get that. You know, I, I really get that, and. Uh, uh, but my again, as I say, with these businesses, you know, um, a lot of times, you know, we 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 say how we would perform or how we would how we what we would do uh, if we were put in those positions, but we really don't know what we would do if we okay. were put in those positions. Okay. Back, CC. Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you now. Okay, so let's stay on task. Um, 
It's not about position at all. That was a clear marketing direction. I mean, because they tried to act as if that one just slid under the radar. No, there's a clear marketing table that meets, that makes these decisions. So the way that they did this was very egregious. It wasn't right. It wasn't good. Now, what we have to do is just decide, like, okay, well, what do you do now? Are you going to support this company? Are you not going to support this company? You know, to each his own. But the information is out there now, and we see, you know, how these businesses operate. Now, there are many businesses that have sold out, many businesses. Now, we don't know the real back end, like the real powers that be and, and what could have happened with that. We, we just really don't know that information. But uh, from our point of view, it looks very hurtful. It looks very hurtful for for them to actually do such a thing. Now, what I wanted to do is, because we're going to wrap this portion up, because um, our show is really moving <laughs> fast today. Um, let's see. So we are going to actually post in BIB Radio um, a list of Black-owned hair care companies that you all can buy from if you're not happy with Shea Moisture. Um, let's see. And actually, Naima gave us a list earlier, but I got another list um, on the internet. And there's so many other black companies that you can support. Uh, another one that's really popular is um, uh, Curls. That's just the name of it, Curls. A lot of people like that one. I've used that one before myself. And again, there are several other lines on here uh, from organic to not organic another one would be Jane Carter solution and kinky curly uh, kinky curly is actually from uh, Seattle um, so I do know that product but there's so many you guys so you don't have to be in an uproar of course there's let's see Miss Jessie you don't have to be in an uproar at all because if you don't like what you're getting or what they're doing then change don't just complain go ahead and change show your support to another company okay so again we're going to post this on bib radio so that you can see you know the the options that you have available to you we will also post those videos too okay so what we need to do is move into our next portion of the show our last segment at uh, the 38th minute um, we want to talk about the Dudley Gala. That is coming up really soon. Uh, Mr. Joe Dudley is an entrepreneur that has been around for a long time. He is a pioneer in the hair care industry. Now, he has not sold out. What he has done is continue to support people. What he has known from him is Mr. S.B. Fuller, who actually mentored people like Mary Kay. Okay, so the way that Mary Kay got her training was through the same mentor that uh, fed Mr. Joe Dudley his information. So what we need to do is focus on that gala in the last half hour. I'll let you all know that it's a three-day event, and it is starting on May 20th. And guess who the, the main speaker is? The main speaker is Mr. Michael V. Roberts. Now, what we want to do is... I'm going to play the video of Mr. Dudley, and then I'll read some more information for you all. Um, I'm going to post that link on BIB Radio if you would like to purchase tickets also, because I do have a specialized link, and I do get a few cookies if you uh, sign up under me, okay? So I appreciate it. But um, we'll post that. But right now, we're going to play the video of Mr. Dudley so you can get familiar with him. Okay, Scotty, go ahead. Okay, well, while we are waiting, I will read to you uh, the description. The description says, capitalism, the only... Hey, CC, they're not hearing you. Yes, yes, so she'll be back on the air in just... Thank 
you very much. Someone just muted me. <laughs> but we still can't hear you. And you all bear with us through these technical difficulties. Um, I think Scotty must have muted everything. Okay. Hello? <laughs> Can we hear now? Yes. Uh, okay. So I think that was like the master mute. I'm not sure. So, Scotty, go ahead and play that Dudley video. Well, actually, would. the video was playing, but I come across this with some YouTube videos. Um, it's just uh-huh. not being picked up. I can hear it, but oh. nobody else can. So I come across that with those videos. So I, I'm sorry I'm unable to play it where y'all can hear it. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, well, let me see. That That's not good. Let's see what I can do here. Uh, let's see if, if you can hear on this end. We'll, we'll try. Um, see if it can be heard on this end. Let's see. Uh, this is the one I wanted to play. Let's see. Slow people rule the world. If you only have patience, can you hear this? When a slow one get it, they got it. Joe continued to struggle with school until his senior year in high school when he learned the lesson that would change his life. When I was about 17 years old, a smart boy took my girlfriend away from me. She said to me, Joe, you are not smart. I want to get married one day. And that means that you won't, we won't have smart kids. The day that I lost that girl, I think that's the day that my life started truly changing. I went all the way back. I got first grade book. I studied second, third, fourth, fifth. And I studied all the way. I didn't need no more girlfriend. All I wanted to do was put something in my head. So nobody could ever take that away from me. And I've been studying ever since then. Anything worthwhile, you got to go through a struggle. The rougher treatment you get, the better it will be if you hang on and don't quit. Don't ever quit. You never give up. You keep right on and you keep saying, I am, I can, and I will. And if you keep doing that, it will happen to you. And that's the key. That's the key. Never quit. Never give up. Never, 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 never. All right. That was Mr. Joe Dudley. And I so appreciate being in the company of all of those fine entrepreneurs. I attended last year's um, gala. And, oh, I'm telling you, Mr. Farrakhan was there. He spoke. Um, It was just such an honor to be, again, in the presence of all of those entrepreneurs. Um, Let me see here. Michael B. Roberts is going to be speaking there this year. He's the keynote speaker. Uh, Let me see. Michael B. Roberts. Let me see what I can read for you guys. They had an intro, but it was kind of kind of small. But let me see if I can get a better one off his website real quick. Uh, Michael V. Roberts. uh, Actionaire is what he's calling himself. Now, he hails from St. Louis, Missouri. He now has a hotel and resort called the Roberts River Walk Urban Resort Hotel. And that is in Detroit. And I know that every year he has a um, conference himself inviting you to learn how to purchase hotels. I mean, that's a big deal, okay? Forget apartment complexes, forget little real estate deals or whatever. He teaches you how to purchase hotels, and that is a big deal. So let's see here. We'll also put his website on um, on uh, BIB Radio. And we have a little, I don't know, this interview may not be small. I don't want to try to play it because it might be too big. But what we will do again, we'll, we'll post this on, on BIB and Sandra and I actually did an interview with Michael Roberts. Uh, maybe we'll play it next week because we're going to promote this Dudley Gala every single uh, week up until the time we're going to talk about it. But um, 
I'll read the description again. Capitalism, the only true pathway to freedom. If you are interested in participating in all four events, uh, let's see, Entrepreneur Empowerment Symposium, 17 Biblical Principles of Success Symposium, Joe L. Dudley Sr. 80th Birthday Celebration, and Fuller Dudley Entrepreneurship Museum Gala and Fundraiser. That's another thing. They're they're building a, a black museum for entrepreneurs, okay? Not like that other one in Washington. This is for black entrepreneurs. Fuller and Dudley Institute of Entrepreneurship presents How to Grow Your Business from Zero to One Million. That will be held during the three days we have prepared a special offer for you. So you can register for this on Eventbrite, or you can go to BIB Radio, where the link will be, and you can definitely register through me so I can get my cookies, okay? <coughs> um, excuse me. And let's see. Hold on. <laughs> okay. An all-inclusive package, uh, additional 10% discount, Price for total all events and VIP seating. They've got all these pricings on here. Um, but again, you can click on the link. Uh, I'm not going to tell you guys the information because I want you to actually click on the link. Um, but I'm telling you, you will not be disappointed. When I went last year for the first time, I got to meet all kinds of people. Um, I got so many business cards. Business cards to me are like money. It's like gold because you just never know you know, when you may need to reach out to that entrepreneur, um, you know, not even just for yourself, but for somebody else that you know. So I was really excited to be there last year, and I'm excited to go again this year. They also have vendor opportunities. If you want to be a vendor, um, there's a form here. And of course, if you guys can't find the information, reach out to me at weareblacksandbusiness at gmail.com, and I can um, guide you in the right direction to get the proper information. But they have a location 1 through 11 and 54 and 55. I mean, there's a lot of information I can read to you. Um, but if you have some products or services or something and you want to get a vendor table, uh, they have that available for you. Let's see here. And then it says Dr. Joe Dudley Sr. 80th birthday celebration black tie gala souvenir booklet ad form. So you can actually put an ad in this booklet and it starts out at $25 and goes all the way up to 500 okay? So if you have a business and you want it to be placed in this memorable book, I would say that you need to get on top of it. And again, if you're having a hard time finding this information, email us at weareblacksinbusiness at gmail.com. If you have uh, trouble getting your accommodations together, let me know. I'm a virtual assistant. I can get right on top of that for you. But again, we will put the link in BIB radio. Um, but if for some reason you're scrambling around, you can't do that. You can't find it. Um, it is on Eventbrite. And you can just type in SB Fuller and Joe L. Dudley Senior Foundation or Joe L. Dudley Senior 80th Birthday Celebration. Or you could just type in the word Dudley, D-U-D-L-E-Y, and you'll be able to find that on Eventbrite. So I'm excited about that. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I hope you enjoyed our show, as a matter of fact. Robert, what did you think about our show? Uh, very, very good show. I mean, these are issues that uh, can only help aid and assist us to success, uh, being in business, black people. We, we we have to talk about these things uh, that are in the black community. Uh, there, as we posted earlier on Facebook, there is a divide there between the black consumer and the black entrepreneur, and we have to uh, <clears throat> be held accountable as entrepreneurs and um, and as consumers. You all have to really understand that you're dealing with people who really haven't had formal education in business we we're doing for self because most of us were forced to do for self so a lot of times they compare us to fortune 500 companies that have scholars in those companies running those companies but we don't have that kind of uh access to that 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 type of uh, uh professionalism uh, uh skilled people in our small businesses so please black consumer please be patient with us. 
But I'm not telling you to put up with nigger behavior. You don't have to do that. But be patient with us as we grow and support us as we grow, and we will be able to bring the products and goods to uh, our community that you are wanting and need. Sounds great. Well, you all, I mean, it's such a loaded, loaded, loaded subject. I mean, we could really go on and on forever about how we need to uh, support black businesses. I'm also going to post something uh, on NBIB showing, or BIB radio, uh, why it is important for us to support black businesses. Um, Some people just don't get it. I mean, some people just will not get it. They think that we are the world, we are the children, and, you know, everybody's trying to help one another. If that were true, we would not be having this conversation now. So just be looking in BIB Radio for all the information for tonight. We'll also post the link uh, so that you can listen to the show again. Make sure that you call in every week listening, you know, listening to our new programs. I appreciate all that showed up tonight. Thank you guys so much. We hope to have you back again. Thank you, Tia. We look forward to hearing from you. Um, And yeah, join us here next week at 7 p.m. Don't forget to support Black Talk Media Project.org. And we'll see you all next week right here on BIB Radio. Good night.